What's up guys, it's the Merc here from Pool Shed Games, and tonight I wanted to bring you a video, and it's going to be about a list that I might bring to a typical game with my gaming group. Now, this is a series, I'm not going to say it's a series, but this is the type of video that I kind of want to start doing more of, because I kind of want to show you guys like what kind of lists I play, uh, what kind of builds I like when I play Dystopian Wars, I guess. Um, and it'll kind of give you a a fleet overview, I guess, of what I have. So, first things I want to say is uh, sometimes in my group we stretch the composition a little bit. And by stretch the composition a little bit, I mean we're not overly concerned with uh, did we bring 60% and only 60% in large and medium, and do we bring 30% only 30% in smalls? I know some people will probably gawk or you know balk at that and say, well, that's not how you're supposed to play. And you know, I understand that, I do. But we're a gaming group. We've been playing together now for, who man, 15 years, maybe more, and it's just that we've kind of hit a point where. We sort of just mutate the rules a little bit for how we play to make it more fun for us to play. Some of the guys in our group are a little older. Uh, they don't pick up on the nuances and stuff so as, as quickly. So we just play it the way we play. And uh, I think if you're with your gaming group, that's perfectly fine. Now, I will say if I went to, like, if I had a, uh, if I had a friendly local gaming store that I could go to because I wasn't either at school or because they didn't play Stopin Wars, and I went, I would stick to the composition rules as they are in the Stopin Wars rulebook. Because I understand when you're meeting random people, pick up games, you know, you want to play it to the letter of the rules. And that's perfectly fine. Because it's a different situation. I haven't been playing with those people for like 15 or 20 years. So, with that aside, this is uh, a kind of list that I would bring to, say, a Friday night game. And this is exactly the list that I brought two weeks ago, when I played against my buddies Empire of the Blazing Sun. And I will say, um, you'll see there's no drones. And uh, we didn't have local air support because we were playing a multiplayer game, two players per side. And in multiplayer games, you're not... Uh, you don't get the local air support. And then you will see there are no drone launchers. There's no drone carriers in this fleet, which means I had no localized air support. I had no air support at all. Uh, he didn't bring any either, which was kind of nice. But I kind of built this list around the idea that I did not want to use drones because I've been reading on the forums and in the new updates to the Orbats, um drones are kind of being pushed as the way to play Covenant and I wanted to see if that was the case or not and I don't think it is but I'll get to kind of talk to that here at the end of the video so what's in my fleet well you can see there's three of the armored cruisers uh, all they have is a particle accelerator in the front and broadsides I brought a unit of frigates uh, they're the only thing in my army painted at the moment which will soon change because I will be bringing, uh, I'm getting paintbrushes tomorrow. So the rest of the fleet will soon look like this. I brought a time orb, which was the beta, which has the dilation field generator and the teleporter. A unit of Fresnel gunships and the dreadnought. Now this was a thousand point game. It might have been a little bit more than a thousand points. Um, we set up here and write our lists, or throw our lists together in the beginning before the game starts. And we might, you know, look up at each other and go, I'm like 10 points over, I'm 20 points over, do you care? And our opponent will go, no, I'll just add 10 or 20 points. So essentially we just change the point size of the game we're going to play. But, this list actually ended up working out great against my buddy's Empire of the Blazing Sun list. Why is that? Well, he ended up bringing a, um, a horde list. He had... I think two units of corvettes, two units of frigates, 
a unit of, I believe, Tanuki cruisers, which are really gunned up cruisers, a unit of the bare bones regular cruisers, and then the heavy battleship. And uh, he was really relying on his cruiser squadrons to do some damage with his frigates so that he could board with his corvettes, because Empire of the Blazing Sun corvettes are really good at boarding. And uh, it didn't happen, because this list is good at what I'd like to say crowd control. And when I say crowd control, what I mean is there's four particle accelerators in this list. And particle accelerators are great because they go out to whatever range band uh, they go out to. So if it goes out to range band 2, it's 16 inches. It's a 16 inch long, 1 inch wide beam. And any enemy ships that are under it are hit. If they're in range band 1, they take the dice for range band 1. If they're in range band 2, they take the dice for range band 2, and so on and so forth. The Dreadnought also has a particle accelerator, and that goes out to range band 3. Now... This was great for me because certain situations in our game, he ended up bunched up. Uh, I got a real lucky teleport where my Xenos got to line up on like three of his squadrons and just uh, cripple them. And normally, your particle accelerators need fives or sixes to hit because uh, balance and uh, not really like you're aiming it, you're just firing off a beam of energy. But against smalls that are elusive target and small target, you need fives and sixes anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I ended up with some lucky rolls, able to just really kind of crush his his smalls and his uh, the fleet that he had brought. At the end of the game, it ended up that his, his heavy battleship only had one point of damage on it, but it was kind of steaming along by itself with a bunch of uh, squadrons that had been whittled down, picked off, or just destroyed. Uh, I had lost a Fresnel, one of my Xenos was injured, and I had lost all but like one of my frigates. So it kind of felt like I had brought a hard counter to the list that he had intended to run. Now, I mean, if I'd went up against uh, our Republic of France player or our uh, Britannia player, the game might have been different. But I feel like this is a list that's kind of strong, and I will say right now, uh, because I'm sure somebody out there is going to say, well, of course it's strong, you dick, you brought a, a Dreadnought to a thousand point game. I understand that. Um, I actually thought he was bringing a Dreadnought, because nine times out of ten, in our gaming group, Dreadnoughts hit the table, whether it's a thousand points or two thousand points, because the guys in the group like their big Dreadnoughts. I don't blame them, Dreadnoughts are cool, Dreadnoughts are uh, really nice models, and when they're all painted up, they make a great centerpiece, so why wouldn't you want to use them? But my feelings on Dreadnoughts are, and if I would have known that my buddy wasn't bringing a Dreadnought, I would have brought the Aristotle. Um, dreadnoughts belong in games of like 1,500 points or more, at least to me. I think that's where they, they do best. Um, and as a Covenant of Antarctic player, who's soon going to have the option for three different kinds of Dreadnoughts, that, that hurts saying that I don't really want to bring them in anything less than a 1,500-point game. But, uh, this is the list, and to me, I feel that it proved, at least in my mind, that I can run a perfectly, uh, perfectly capable list without, uh, without the need to run drones. So, um... Hopefully you guys liked the video. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to do this as an overview of a fleet that I would kind of run in a game and give you guys kind of my thoughts on, like, what I did with it. Um, the one thing I didn't talk about is both the, the Dreadnought and the Time Orb had time dilation uh, generators, which I threw out first turn because it's templates. And uh, it made it so my fleet was a lot harder to shoot, because if you're shooting through them, uh, if it's your fleet or the enemy's, the thing you're shooting at is partially blocked, which halves your dice, which is pretty fantastic. So that was a reason I didn't take a lot of damage in my first turn. I had the fields up. And then, like I said, I got a really lucky teleport with uh, the, time, the time warp. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, shipyard series that I was doing, where I was talking about the ships and what they did. 
I might just restart that series with the newest edition of the Orbats to talk about, you know, everything. But uh, that's going to do it here for this video. Uh, I'm going to do more of these to show you guys, like, what kind of fleets I play, show you the ships. Eventually I'll do a video like this with my, like, my whole fleet set up so you can see what I have. And uh, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Tell me, you know, you think this list was a, would work in other situations. You think it's a one-trick pony list? Do you think, uh, do you think we play wrong by not using the letter of the rules? Um, you know, any comments you might have, leave them below. Share us with your friends, subscribe, it always helps. And, uh, let me know if you like this format. I know it's been just kind of like, uh, ten minutes of looking at the ships. And it'll be a lot nicer when they're painted, obviously. But, uh, I kind of wanted to try it this way. The other way I do it might be to have the camera facing me and hold the models up, show them to you, kind of talk about it while you're looking at my face. All depends on what you think is better to look at. Models for 10 minutes, or my face. But anyway, hopefully you guys liked the video. We'll see you next time here at Pool Shake Games.